Hey everybody, it's your Uncle Eric here. Well, are you like me? Do you long for the old days of the MCU? You know, when it was good? Are you super disappointed and a little bit upset about Phase Boar? Well, James Gunn has delivered a little Christmas present. Yes, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. It's just 45 minutes, it's on Disney Plus. And I gotta tell you, it feels like the old days. Thank you, James, it felt pretty good. All right, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. I liked it. I can't believe I liked it. Woo! I liked something from Phase 4. I liked Werewolf by Night. That was a special, a one-shot. So maybe these, like, one-shot specials, that's the way to move forward in the MCU. All right, so go watch it. I recommend it. And come on back, because I'm going to start to talk about it now. So the special starts off with... A flashback in animated form. We have the director's brother playing Kraglin the Ravenger. And Kraglin is recalling a time he believed that Yondu ruined Christmas for a young Peter Quill. We're going to find out that wasn't exactly the case. And the animation was a little wonky and wasn't a big fan of that. So, he, so Kraglin tells this story, and then we have our guardians. We have Mantis, we have Drax, we have the director's brother, and we have hot Karen Gillan playing Nebula. Big fan of Karen Gillan. Mm, looking good. Uh, even as Nebula. Yeah, looking good. Uh, they want to bring the Christmas spirit to this depressed town of nowhere, and they want to bring a good happy Christmas to Peter Quill because they think their leader deserves one. And that's basically the setup. And uh, I think it's like Drax or Mantis. They get the idea in their head that the best present to give Peter Quill would be to go and kidnap Kevin Bacon. You may recall from the Guardians movies that uh, Star-Lord talks highly of Kevin Bacon. So all the Guardians believe that he's like an Earth hero. They don't know that he's an actor, but they're going to find that out. Uh, so they thought that would be a good idea to kidnap him. Uh, you know, in thinking about bringing the Christmas spirit uh, back to someplace depressed, I was thinking, I got it in my notes, I wish Kevin Feige would bring the MCU spirit back to the MCU. So, Kevin, come on, let's go. You know, dive into those comic books. The stories are there, my friend. Just make the comic books. All right, so uh, we have Star-Lord, thank God. We, we have uh, Chris Pratt. And I'm like, okay, this feels like the old MCU. And Chris Pratt talks to, like, Beezer, who is in an alien rock band. And they start to sing a song about their understanding, their misunderstanding about Christmas. And it was very good. It felt like a holiday special. It was very funny. And it's great to see Star-Lord back. So I'm like, okay, cool. This is feeling like the old days. I'm liking this. I want this. Um, and, oh, and then we see uh, Groot. Groot is like popping up in the background, but Groot looks totally different. He's now buff Groot. Uh, it, it looks like a guy in a Groot suit, but I guess it is CG. But did they do this to save some money? Is it like, um, it looks like maybe they just drew over a guy in a suit. Because Let me know in the comments what you guys think about the new Groot design. I'm not sure I dig it, but oh well, it's there. All right, so there's a couple occasions I can smell Phase Boar in this special. Some small things, but they're there. So Cosmo the dog, he is now a she. At least the voice chip is a she. Maybe he is a he. I don't know. I don't know what pronoun to use, but Cosmo has been gender swapped, it appears. All right, we move on. So anyway, uh, Drax and Mantis, they go to Earth to find Kevin Bacon. And when they arrive on Earth, they arrive in uh, Los Angeles. Good guess. And uh, they go downtown and they see all those cosplayers and they get confused. They think the cosplayers are actually our Marvel heroes, like uh, Captain America and things. And uh, so that's cute. And then the uh, tourists think that the Guardians, Drax and Mantis, are uh, cosplayers and want their photos taken with them. So we have some fun with that. And then uh, Drax gets confused and beats up a GoBot. So apparently GoBots are a thing in the MCU, Psykill in particular. I didn't know the GoBots were back. I didn't know anyone remembered them except me. So, okay, cool, GoBots are back. And uh, Drax and Mantis walk into a gay bar. That's not a joke, they do. And they do shots and some guy wants to hit on Drax and make him dance, but Drax don't dance. 
Uh, but he will do shots, yeah. So we have that. And after the gay bar, they uh, stumble upon a lady who is selling maps of the homes of the stars. And uh, they don't have any more money. They spend it on shots. So Mantis touches the lady with the maps and gets a map, gets all her money. The, the Guardians are a little ruthless, uh, as we're going to see. They don't, they don't mess around. They, they still keep that edge of being uh, on the verge of being bad guys sometimes. So I did like that. Anyway, they got the map. They know where Kevin Bacon lives. They go to his house. They were like ringing his little uh, security camera doorbell thingy. And Kevin Bacon tells them to go away. And they're not going to take no for an answer, so we have Drax and Mantis jumping over the gate and going to his front door. And I have to say, uh, B Batista and is it Palm Clementif? Uh, they got great chemistry together. They really do. So good job. And I forget, this Palm Clementif, why haven't we seen more of her? She is charming. She's a great actress. Uh, I need to see more of her. Is there anything good that she's in that I need to watch? She's a French actress, I believe, right? So in the comments section, if anyone knows, let me know what's up with uh, Palm, because I'm a fan. All right. Anyway, uh, they chase Kevin Bacon around his house, down the street. The police show up, and uh, Drax and Mantis take care of the police. The police are pretty ruthless. They were shooting kind of quick on Drax, but he does, he is brandishing a large knife, you know, on his lower leg, so maybe that makes sense. But anyway, they take care of the cops. They don't kill the cops. And uh, Mantis touches Kevin Bacon and convinces him with the mind control touch that uh, he should accompany them back to nowhere. All right, so we have Drax and Mantis. They're flying back to nowhere with the legendary Kevin Bacon. They're asking him a lot of questions of his famous movie roles. And they discover that Kevin Bacon isn't really like a superhero. He's an actor. And they don't like actors, so they're very disappointed. So they tell Kevin, you need to not be an actor when we give you to Peter. You got to be like a, the superhero that he thinks you are. And uh, he suggests being Bruce Wayne, Batman. I see what James Gunn's doing there. He's moving to the DCU after volume three. Well played, James. Well played. Uh, and the Guardians are like, no, 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 no. Just be Kevin Bacon the guy from the movies, your movies. And he's like, all right, whatever. Uh, so they, uh, they stole a lot of Christmas lights from Los Angeles. They also brought those on the ship. And they surprised Peter Quill with the town of nowhere, all lit up in Christmas lights. And uh, the show plays like a Smashing Pumpkins Christmas song. And I'm thinking, now wait a second, Peter Quill, he would have been off, off Earth by then, right? So it really should be a song from the 70s or 80s. So I don't know about this Smashing Pumpkins Christmas song. And they give Kevin to Peter, all wrapped up in a box. But Peter uh, reacts not as they expected. He goes, oh my God, this is kidnapping. What did you do? He, I guess he does realize that Kevin Bacon is an actor. And uh, uh, Peter Quill makes Mantis take Kevin out of the trance. And of course, Kevin Bacon is terrified to be surrounded by the Guardians and all these aliens. Uh, the director's brother, a little later, I guess they catch Kevin. The director's brother tells Kevin, this is why we kidnapped you, because we wanted to give Peter Quill a special Christmas, because he's not had a special Christmas in a long time. And Kevin Bacon's got a big heart, so he decides to stay, hang out, pick up his guitar, and he plays a Christmas song with Beezer's band, the Alien Band. And the Guardians celebrate Christmas and exchange gifts. In fact, hot Karen Gillan, uh, Nebula gives Rocket Raccoon Bucky's metallic arm. How about that? Pretty cool. And uh, the town looks great. I love the set. Well done there. And it, it, again, it makes for a very great holiday special. You can feel the, the holiday cheer. Thank you, James Gunn. Uh, the animation returns toward the end of the show, and we see that Yondu didn't ruin Peter Quill's Christmas, and he actually gave Peter his two pistols that he uses in all the movies. So Yondu did give Peter a gift. And at the very end, Mantis approaches Peter, and because uh, she was scared to do this, but she tells Peter that she uh, is his sister. And Peter Quill says, well, that's the best Christmas present anyone could get. And uh, that's the end of the show. Good. 
And there is a post-credit moment involving Rocket and Groot and Cosmo. It's cute, so look out for that. And yeah, James Gunn, good job. Good job, James. I'm looking forward to Guardians Volume 3 after seeing this. This felt special, like a holiday special. And it felt like the old MCU that I love with the characters I still love. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> after watching... After watching the past several years of uh, disappointing MCU product, uh, this, this felt really nice. A great present from James Gunn. So that's it. Go see it. Leave a comment. Let me know, did you like the holiday special from the Guardians of the Galaxy? All right, everybody, have a great day, a great week. I will see you soon. And as always, I will see you on the new...